Dear participants, welcome to the course on supply chain digitization. It is jointly being taught by Professor Priyanka Barma, Professor Sushmita Naran and Professor Devbrata Das from IIM Mumbai. So, in this lecture, we will focus on the case study uh, which we were talking about in the last class. So, this case study is all about the efficiency measurement of nine manufacturing facilities ok. So, if you see uh, the management wants to find out the efficiency of their nine facilities. So, for each of these facilities they collected the data related to outputs and inputs. So, they consider two major outputs production yield and overall equipment effectiveness. They consider two inputs, one is cycle time, another one is resource utilization. So, based on these two inputs and two outputs, they want to find out out of these nine facility, which one is performing better in terms of efficiency, which one is not performing so good. That is the first objective and second objective is, if one facility is not doing good in terms of efficiency, then where they should improve? Should they focus on increasing output or should they focus on reducing inputs? So, that is the question which is uh, there in the mind of senior management. So, with that objective in mind, we developed one data envelopment analysis model and this model was developed ok. So, now if you see the objective function it is non-linear. So, why non-linear? Because my decision variables are there in the numerator as well as denominator. So, 92 into V 1 plus 80 into V 2 divided by 32 into U 1 plus 88 into U 2. So, it is a non-linear. Okay. Similarly, if you look into the constants, these are also non-linear because numerator as well as denominator both terms have decision variables. So, it is basically kind of y by x type. So, since it is y by x type, these are non-linear expression. So, now the question is can I convert non-linear terms into linear terms because non-linear optimization is a little tough to do, but we know how to solve linear optimization model in this case specifically it will be a linear programming model. So, can I convert this non-linear programming model into a linear programming model. So, if you look into this constraints very carefully it is 92 V 1 plus 80 V 2 weighted sum of output divided by weighted sum of input. So, can I convert this term linear? Yes, it is possible. So, if I do this let us say I take this denominator out from here and put it over there. So, it will be 92 into V 1 plus 80 V 2 less than equal to 32 into U 1 plus 88 U 2. So, the constant has become linear. So, it was non-linear but I have converted it into linear term. Similarly, all these constants can be easily converted into linear term if I bring the denominator from here and multiply it with this. So, that is how all the nine constants is converted into linear terms. So, all of these are now linear ok. So, all these are linear. 
Now, the constants are converted into linear. Now, if we look into the objective function, it is still non-linear. So, objective function is still non-linear. So, it is having y by x type of expression. The weighted sum of output is having decision variables v1 and v2. Weighted sum of input which is at the denominator is also having decision variables e1 and e2. So, therefore, this is nonlinear. Now, can I convert this term into linear? Yes or no? So, now the one point which is important here is efficiency score. So, if you remember the last lecture, the efficiency score, the maximum value of efficiency is 1, it can never go beyond 1. So, we will take that point into account and we will try to convert this objective function into linear term. So, now if we look into this denominator, okay. so let us assume that this is 1. Okay. So, if I take 32 u 1 plus 88 u 2 equal to 1, if I put this as an additional constant, if I put additional. So, this is my additional constant. I only had 9 constant for 9 facility, but I have put 32 u 1 plus 8 u 8 2 equal to 1. Now, the denominator has become 1 by virtue of this constant. So, as denominator has become 1, what is the maximum value numerator can take? maximum value numerator can take is also 1. So, therefore, if I add this constant 32 u 1 plus 88 u 2 equal to 1, I am not losing any information, I am not putting any restriction which is not, uh, not part of the model. So, therefore, if I make sure that denominator is 1, the numerator by virtue of this constant because I also have this constant. So, this constant makes sure that this term 99 92 t v 1 plus 80 v 2 plus 32 u 1 plus 88 u 2. So, this is my objective function and if I compare this objective function with this constant. So, objective function cannot take value more than 1, this has to be less than equal to 1 because the definition of efficiency is the efficiency value has to be less than equal to 1. And if I make sure that this value is 1, then the maximum value numerator can achieve equal to 1 because of this constant. So, therefore, I can convert this nonlinear term into linear term adding one additional constant like this and then the objective function will be maximize 92 v 1 plus 80 v 2 and this term cannot take more than 1 because if it takes more than 1 then this expression this objective function will be more than 1 which is not satisfying this constant. So, therefore, because of this constant because of this constant for facility 1 this objective function value will be restricted to 1 and it can reach maximum 1. With this conversion, I can convert nonlinear model into linear model. So, now in this case, all my constants are linear, my objective function is also linear. So, I have a linear programming model, the objective is maximize 92 v 1 plus 8 to v 2 and subject to 9 constants related to the efficiency value less than equal to 1 and one more additional constant which has come by virtue of converting nonlinear objective function into linear objective function. So, now if I solve this model, I will get the value of v 1, v 2, u 1, u 2. Okay. Now, as far as solution is concerned, it has now become easier because my model is no longer nonlinear is a linear programming model. Now, if I change the facility 
facility instead of facility 1 if I put facility 2 only thing my objective function will change this 9 constant will remain same. So, every time if I change the facility my objective function will change in the non-linear model in the linear version of the model objective function will change and this additional const additional constant will change. So, now let us see can I put this in a generalized form because in this case I am having two output two inputs and nine facilities in reality you might have m number of outputs n number of input p number of facilities and so on. So, therefore, I need to have a generalized form. So, hope you have understood the concept now let us see how can I put a generalized form. So, generalize data envelopment analysis model for facility p. Okay. So, now this is my objective function. So, what is the numerator value is nothing but weighted sum of outputs. So, I have weight v k, v k is nothing but weight of output k. I am multiplying it with kth output value of facility p. So, for facility p I have the output value of like I have kth output. So, that should be multiplied by v k and then I am summing it up all of this. So, this is nothing but weighted sum of weighted sum of outputs. Now, numerator if you see I have u j multiplied by input j p. So, u j is weight of input j and how many inputs I have j equal to 1 to m. So, I have m inputs and for each input I have weight u 1 is the weight of input 1, u 2 is the weight of input 2 dot 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 u m is the weight of input m. So, that is being multiplied by input j p. What is input j p? For facility p the value of input j is written over here. So, that is how I can get. So, the denominator is weighted sum of inputs. So, now I have weighted sum of outputs divided by weighted sum of inputs that is my efficiency score I need to maximize it. Okay. And how many outputs I have? I have s number of output. So, k equal to 1 to s. So, v 1 represent the weight of output 1, v 2 represents weight of output 2 dot 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 v s represent weight of output s. So, that is how this objective function will look like. Now, I also have to write constant. So, what is the constant? Constant is nothing but efficiency score of all of these facilities should be less than equal to 1 and I am assuming that there are 9 n facilities each with m inputs and s outputs. So, now this is my constant. The constant is efficiency of each facility. So, how many facility I have for i equal to 1 to n. So, for each of this facility the efficiency is less than equal to 1. So, this is my model and decision variables are v k greater than equal to 0, u j greater than equal to 0. So, j takes value 1 to m because I have m inputs k takes value between 1 to s because I have s outputs. So, this is my generalized DEA model for facility p. p could take any value from 1 to n. So, now if I have to convert this into a linear form, I can do the similar way as you have done for the example. Now, this term is non-linear, this term is also non-linear. So, first let us see how can I focus. So, first I am converting the constants into linear. So, this is if I put this term weighted sum of inputs 
and bring it in the right hand side that would be linear term. So, that is what I have written V k into output k i summation over k equal to 1 to s minus summation over j equal to 1 to m u j into input j i less than equal to 0 for all i equal to 1 to n. So, this term basically has been converted into this term and now it is linear. Okay. Now, objective function has to be linear. So, as we discussed the input value we should convert we should make it 1. So, that is what we have written u j input j p summation over j equal to 1 to m. So, that is nothing but weighted sum of input that we are making it equal to 1. So, again this is linear. Now, the output weighted sum of output is my objective function. This is also linear. So, now this is a generalized D A model after linearization for facility P. So, P could be 1, 2, 3, 4 dot 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 n. So, if P equal to 1, this output of facility 1 will come here. If p equal to 1, input of facility 1 will come here and this value will remain same, this will not change. If p equal to 2, output of facility 2 will come. If p equal to 2, input of facility 2 will come. So, only this term and this term, only the objective function and this constant will change based on the value of the p. The rest of these constraints, the n constraints will remain same. So, that is a generalized model uh, because when you go and in a real world you might have m number of inputs, you might have s number of outputs, n number of facilities. So, you can use this model. Okay. So, now we have understood generalized version of DEA model. So, now let us see for this specific case, although we have developed the model, we have converted into a linear form, but we have not solved it yet. So, how can I solve it? So, for that we will use Excel solver and in one of the previous lectures, uh, Professor Priyanka Verma has already taught you like how to use Excel solver. So, we will also use Excel solver to solve the linear programming model. Because now our model is no longer non-linear, we have converted it into a linear programming model. So, we can easily solve it using Excel solver and so let us see how can we solve it using Excel solver. So, first we will explain the major major steps in PowerPoint slide, then we will take you to Excel solver and solve it in front of you so that you can get a good hands on. Okay. So, now these were my data. I had two outputs production yield and overall equipment effectiveness. I had two inputs cycle time and resource utilization for nine facilities. So, first thing you have to put this data in an excel file. Okay. So, we will provide you the excel file with these data points. Okay, now, now, let us understand the steps. Okay. So, objective function after linearization was like this maximize 92 v 1 plus 80 v 2. Okay. So, now, let us see how can we put this data into excel. So, I have four decision variable v 1 v 2 u 1 u 2. So, what is v 1 is nothing but weight of output 1 that is weight of production yield v 2 is weight of output 2 that is weight of overall equipment effectiveness u 1 is the weight of input 1 that is weight of cycle time u 2 is the weight of input 2 that is weight of resource utilities. And initially for these four decision variables that is four weights, two output weights and two input weights, we are taking the value 0, 0, 0, 0. So, to initialize the process, 
we are taking the value 0 0 0 0 the yellow cells which you are seeing now. So, initial value of v 1 is 0, initial value of v 2 is 0, initial value of u 1 is 0, initial value of u 2 is 0. Okay. Now, the coefficient of v 1 in the objective function is 92, coefficient of v 2 in the objective function is 80. So, the green cells represents the coefficient of v 1 in objective function that is 92, this is coefficient of v 2 in the objective function. So, the objective function is 92 into v 1 plus 80 into v 2. So, now v 1 and v 2 both are 0 0 initially. So, what will be the value 92 into 0 plus 80 into 0. So, that is 0. Okay. So, this term is nothing but 92 into v 1 plus 80 into v 2. Okay. So, this is the term. Now, initially both are 0 0. So, therefore, objective function value is also 0. So, objective function is clear. Now, let us focus on constraint 0. So, what was constraint 0? Constraint 0 was derived from the objective function to make the terms linear. So, what was the constraint 0 is nothing but weighted sum of inputs. So, 32 into u 1 plus 88 into u 2. The initially the value of u 1 is 0, value of u 2 is also 0 and 32 is nothing but coefficient of u 1, 88 is coefficient of u 2. So, 32 will be multiplied by 0, 88 will be multiplied by 0. So, this term is nothing but 32 into 0 plus 88 into 0, but if I write it in a generalized value, generalized form it will be 32 into u 1 plus 88 into u 2. So, that is how this value is coming. Okay. So, initially it is 0, but I have to make sure that this value becomes 1. So, that is the right hand side. So, although it is 0, but when I solve it, I have to make sure that this value is no longer 0, it has to be equal to 1 because I need to satisfy this constant. So, I write now 0, 0, 0, 0 is not satisfying my constant. So, this is not a feasible solution. So, I have to get a feasible solution to get that first I have to make sure that this 0 is not 0, it has to be 1. Okay, that is how we have put this constant. Now, I had 9 constants for 9 facilities. Okay. So, what was the constant? The first constant was 92 into v 1 plus 80 v 2 less than equal to 32 into u 1 plus 88 u 2 in the generalized form. Now, this term, these two terms, if I take it left hand side, it will be 92 into v 1 plus 80 v 2 minus 32 u 1 minus 88 u 2 less than equal to 0. So, now, how to write it in Excel? So, 92 into 0, 92 into v 1, initial now v 1 is 0. So, 92 into 0, 80 into v 2, 80 into 0 minus 32 into u 1, 32 into 0 minus 88 into u 2, 88 into 0. So, that is this value. Okay. So, what is this value? This is nothing but if I just write it over here, 92 into v 1 plus 80 into v 2 minus 32 into u 1 minus 88 into u 2. So, this is this term. Since all of them are 0, I am getting this 0 and it has to be less than equal to 0. So, same way you can put constant 2, constant 3, constant 4, so on constant 9. So, that is how these calculations are there. So, now the objective function. So, if you go to Excel, we will see this value objective function value is nothing but 92 into v 1 plus 80 into v 2. This value you will see 32 into v 1 plus 88 into u 2, 92 into v 1 plus 80 v 2 minus 32 u 1 minus 88 u 2. 
Similarly, all of these calculations are mentioned. So, the formulas are there in Excel and we will see this. So, how is, what is this? This is nothing but this value. What is constant 2? Constant 2. So, this is nothing but this formula. What is constant 3? Constant 3 is nothing but this formula. Okay. So, that is how formulas are entered and once you go to the Excel solver, we will show you how to uh, do this calculation over there. Okay. Now, all the cells are having formulas as we have shown to you. So, once all the cells are entered with the formulas, relationships are there, we have to enter the same thing into Excel solver. So, Excel solver uh, looks like this, this is the screenshot. So, the set objective, I am trying to maximize because my objective is maximization type. So, I will click here maximization. So, what I want to maximize 92 V 1 plus 80 V 2. What is this term? This term is nothing but this value, this cell. What is this cell? F 17. So, F 17 is nothing but 92 into V 1 plus 80 into V 2. So, this cell I want to maximize that is what we have written F 17. Then by changing variable cell, these are my decision variables. So, what are my decision variables? V1, V2, V E1, U2. So, V1 is B17 initial value 0, C17, D17, E17. So, B17 to E17. So, these are my decision variables. Initially, all are 0, 0, 0, 0, but once you solve it, these values will be changed and we will get the actual value of the decision variables. Then, what are the constant? The constant is 32 E1 plus 88 U2 should be 1. That means this value, this value is nothing but 32 E1 plus 88 U2 should be 1. So, that means F, F19 should be equal to H19. So, F19 should be equal to H19. And then I have these many constants. Okay. So, what are this constant? So, this constant is nothing but this value, this value is nothing but this one 92 V 1 plus 80 V 2 minus 32 E 1 minus 88 U 2 less than equal to 0. So, this value is nothing but this third constant is nothing but this one and the ninth constant is nothing but this one. Okay. So, we have already explained. So, all of these formulas are entered here. So, all of this should be less than equal to 0 that means F F 20 F 20 to F 28 F 20 to F 28 should be less than equal to H 20 to H 28. So, that is what we have written here. Okay. So, now we have the model which we have entered into the Excel solver and we are making sure that unconstant variables are non-negative. So, all the decision variables v1, v2, u1, u2 should be non-negative greater than equal to 0 and we are using simplex LP. So, if you use all of this parameter and click on solve, you will get a solution like this. Okay. So, now this solution is very important for us to uh, present. Okay. So, if you look into this efficiency results, so efficiency is nothing but the value of the objective functions. So, when I solve for facility 1, the model which you have seen here, maximize 92 V 1 plus 80 V 2, the objective function will be 0 0.9572, it is not efficient, 95 percent efficient, 5 percent efficient I still could achieve. For facility 2 is 87 percent efficient and so on. Okay. Now, if I look into this data, I can see factory 4 is efficient, 4 is efficient and factory 7 is efficient. So, factory 4 and 7, these are efficient, 100 percent efficiency score is 100 percent, okay. whereas other factories are not efficient. 
So, if we look factory 8 is having lowest efficiency score 76 percentage efficiency score. Now, I still have 24 percent to improve. So, the question is where should I focus on? If I am a manager of factory 8, where should I focus on? I can still improve 24 percent efficiency. Should I focus on increasing the outputs or should I focus on reducing the inputs? So, if you see the value of the weights that is the decision variables for factory 8, if I see as far as two outputs are concerned, output 2 is having high weight 0.01. Similarly, if I look into the input, the resource utilization is having high weight. Now, if I compare these two, V2 is having more weight, V2 is 0.011, whereas U2 is 0 0.010. So, V2 is having little bit more weightage compared to U2. If I have to increase the efficiency by putting minimum effort, I should try to increase the overall equipment effectiveness of facility 8 because weight is highest over here. So, since weight is highest over here, I should try to focus on increasing the output too. That means, for facility 8, I should try to increase the output of overall equipment effectiveness. So, if I put my resources to increase the output of overall equipment effectiveness, my efficiency will increase at a faster rate. Let us say which factory? Let us say I am to focus on 0.92. Okay. 0.92 is the efficiency score of facility 9. So, it is not efficient enough, 8 percent efficiency I can still increase. So, if I want to increase the efficiency, where should I focus on? Should I focus on this in output? Should I focus on this output? Should I focus here? Should I focus here? Now, I have to see the value of this output parameters. Value of the output parameters, this is the maximum. 0.033. So, I can see for facility 9, if I focus on reducing the cycle time, then my efficiency will increase at a faster rate. Okay. That is how the interpretation should be. So, out of these 4 decision variables V1, V2, E1, U2, you have to see which decision variable is having more value. So, these are nothing but the weights. So, wherever you have more weights, my focus should be on those parameters. If weight, more weight is on output, then I should try to increase the output value. If more weight is on input parameters, then for that specific parameter, for that specific facility, I should try to reduce the input values. Then I will achieve efficiency at a faster rate, the efficiency score will increase at a faster rate. So, now we have solved both the problems which we stated at the earlier in the case. The first question was out of this 9 facility, which facility is more efficient? So, I can say facility 4 and facility 7, these are the efficient because their efficiency score is 100 percent. So, 4 and 7, 4 and 7 efficient. Okay. Now, rest all are inefficient, but among the inefficient uh, facilities, I can see facility 8 is the most inefficient because the efficiency store is 76 percent, they still can improve the efficiency by 24 percent. And then after facility 8, which is the next uh, least efficient, 87 percent I can see. 87 percent is facility 2. So, facility 2 has still option to increase efficiency by 13 percent and so on. So, that I can increase the efficiency. Now, the question is next question is how can they increase the efficiency? Since 8 is having lowest efficiency score, I will see the value of weights V1, V2, E1, U2. Since V2 is the highest 
weight. So, I should try to focus on increasing the overall effectiveness, overall equipment effectiveness. That means, right now my value is 68, you see, right now my value is 68. The model suggests that you should increase it. I should try to increase it to 70, 72, 73, 74. If you see, uh, it has maximum value 85. Right now, I am standing at 68. So, I can still improve 17 percent more from the from my like peers. So, therefore, if I increase this value 68 to 70, 70 to 73, 75, my efficiency will keep on increasing. So, rather than focusing on all other parameters, I may focus on increasing the effectiveness of equipment. Okay. Similarly, if I focus on 9 facility, I should try to reduce this value and so on. Similarly, if I focus on facility 2, it is suggesting me that I need to increase overall equipment effectiveness, I need to increase this value 78, I have to increase it little bit. At the same time, it is suggesting me that resource utilization also you need to reduce, right? Right now, I am, it reduce, I am increasing too much, I am utilizing too much resources, 94 percent. So, it is suggesting me, although you have to increase overall effectiveness of the equipment, you also have to reduce resource utilization, you are utilizing too much resources and output is not that great. So, therefore, it is focusing that either I should reduce resource utilization or I should increase overall effectiveness of the equipment or I can do both, then also I will be able to achieve efficiency. So, this data, the output of the model is not only telling me which one is efficient, which one is not efficient, it is also telling me where should I focus on out of these four parameters, should I focus on output, should I focus on input, should I focus on combination of output and input. Like in the case of facility 2, I am focusing on combination of output as well as input. So, I am my focus is increasing output 2 and reducing input 2. Similarly, for factory 8, my focus on increasing output 2 and reducing, you can see this value, reducing the value of resource utilization. So, we got the idea, the managerial interpretation. Now, let us see quickly how we can do this using Excel. So, I have already explained the Excel solver, Excel like interpretation. We will now go to the Excel and run it once again and show you how this Excel works. Okay. So, if you open this excel file, then these are the data which is already there given to us. So, do not see this data now, we will explain. And now, this is my optimization model as we have explained in the PPT. So, initial values are 0, 0, 0 and 0. Okay. These are my initial values. So, now if I select facility 1, I have selected facility 1. So, if I have select facility, if I have selected facility 1, I am getting 92 into V1, 80 into V2, this value. Since both of them are 0, 0 is 0. And then input values in the objective function for facility 1 is 32 and 88. Now, if I go to data, solver and solve it you will get 95 percent, 95.72 percent as the efficiency score and see the weights have changed. Okay. Initially it was 0, 0, now after solving weights have changed and I can see OEE is having 0 0.011 weight and then 0 0.008 for cycle time, 0 0.008 for resource utilization. The same value I have copied and pasted it over here. Now, let us say I want to go to facility, I want to see facility 4. Okay. So, facility 4, I have 90, 78 as my output parameters, 30, 82, 30, 82 as my input parameters and I have used a VLOOKUP function. So, automatically if you select facility 4, these two values, these four values will automatically be changed. 
Now if I solve here you will see a solution 100 percent efficiency that is what we discuss in the PPT also it is using 100 percent efficiency. So, same way let us see for factory 8. So, if I change factory 8 see automatically 7468 has come coefficient of output uh, coefficient of objective function similarly 3594 has also come over here. Now, solver solve you are getting 76 percent efficiency that is what we discuss in the PPT and these values are my weights and see this is having highest weight 0 0.011 then resource utilization and then cycle time and production rate. So, now if you go through the excel file you will see the formulas as we explain in the PPT. So, I request you please go to go through each of this cell and see how these formulas are calculated whatever you discuss in the PPT the exactly same formulas are written over here you can also explore on your own. So, one thing I would like to mention here which we did not talk in X PPT is this constant. So, B 7 to E 17 is nothing but these decision variables I am putting a very minimum value 0 0.0000601. So, I do not want to get weight 0. So, that is why we have put a very minimum value of decision variable. So, epsilon. So, instead of getting 0 weight I wanted to keep the value 0 0.00001. So, if you get 0 values you might think that these parameters are not important. So, therefore, we have kept a, kept a very minimum value okay? so that we do not get 0 for any of this uh, weight we should not get 0 for v 1 v 2 e 1 e 2 should have at least some importance. So, therefore, I have kept a very very low importance 0 0.0001. Otherwise, if I remove this, you will get 0, you will my, you, this parameter will be 0, this parameter will be, this decision variable will be 0, this decision variable will be 0. So, although like when you present to somebody, they might think that 0 means that parameter is having no importance, but you know in reality cycle time production yield has importance. Although in this case, it is not coming up as a top important, but it has importance. So, therefore, I have kept a very low value. 0 0.00001 so 601 you can if you want you can keep further low value also uh, but i suggest avoid putting zero then the interpretation will be like people might think is of no use okay now if you solve it you will get like solver found a solution all constants and optimality conditions are satisfied so linear programming model which we got it is optimum and we got a solution. Okay. So, that is how you get all the solutions. So, I have to run it 9 times if we keep on changing this then every time you have to go solver and run it. So, if I run 9 times I will get 9 such values of the weights and 9 efficiency score and that is how the scores are calculated and we have used this in the PPT. So, hope you could uh, get the idea of data envelopment analysis and the usefulness of this technique. So, very useful technique it is used for measuring efficiency I can compare efficiency of similar uh, facilities, similar warehouses, uh, similar distribution centers, similar factories. So, it is a very very useful tools only thing we need to find out uh, important value of outputs, important value of inputs. If we have inputs and outputs data, these models can be applied and we can find out which one is efficient and which one is not efficient. And not only that, if a factory or facility is not efficient, like should you focus on outputs, should you focus on inputs, so efficiency increases. Okay. So, with that I would like to stop this lecture. So, thank you so much, look forward to seeing you in the next class.